Hello from Rubber Gunner Rubber Band Guns. This is a Zenbot 1624 CNC router. I've been using this machine for about a year now to complete some of the steps involved in making the rubber band guns that I sell. Right now the router is cutting out a pair of frame plates for a submachine gun. I've had an overall very positive experience using this machine and I came into it uh, not knowing anything in particular about CNC routers or the software or uh, the general technology that is involved. To be clear, there is a lot to learn. You have to have a, an attitude of, um, you know, almost like you're, you're going into a college course or something even though it's something where you're going to be uh, teaching yourself and guiding yourself through the process. There's a total of three software or types of software that you need to be good at to uh, make use of a machine like this. You need to be able to use a CAD software. You're going to need to learn how to use a CAM software, which is a tool patch generating software that turns um, a design done in a CAD software into a a tool path and then you're going to need to learn how to um, use the software that actually runs the machine which is uh, what then interprets the tool path and turns it into work done by the machine to create whatever it is that you're making. Starting out I was already very familiar with a simple 2D CAD program. I put quite a bit of time into learning Vectrix Cut2D CAM software, but it seems like a fairly well designed piece of software for generating toolpaths and has actually been quite a bit of fun to use. You can download a free trial version and actually learn how to use it in advance of purchasing a CNC router. Mach 3 is the software that actually runs the CNC machine. It seems kind of equivalent to a printer driver for your inkjet printer although it's a much more complicated piece of software. It's surprising though how little you actually have to uh, understand about it in order to get up and running here with the machine. So looking at the machine itself here, uh, I should start off by saying that uh, this big sheet of particle board is not actually part of what comes with the machine Underneath it, uh, what you can't see is a nice Baltic birch um, surface. Uh, as you can read about um, on the website, it has a matrix of threaded inserts, um, which are very handy for attaching your work pieces. And I've seen in other people's videos that a lot of a lot of folks are using clamps. Um, um, you know that they are screwing down to the the, the inserts and using those clamps then to hold down their work pieces and I've ended up um, uh, holding my work pieces directly um, to the the bed itself uh, which has worked out for me. Since I generally cut all the way through my work pieces I installed the particle board uh, to protect the machine's bed and then I also use a system of little replaceable fiberboard squares to suspend my work pieces above the particle board. You can also see here that I've got a, um, a shoe um, attached to the base of the router for holding the dust collection tube going to my shop vac and that's something else that's um, it's not included with the router and it's actually the the very first thing that I cut out that um, once I got to the point where I wasn't scared to actually run the machine. When setting up the machine another thing that you do have to work out for yourself is the routing of the cables um, and that's a bit of a chore but it um, actually kind of makes sense that you do that yourself since different people are gonna gonna be setting the machine up in different spaces and um, it's not that big a deal 
um, here in the video if you look closely you'll see that I've got some solutions that I came up with for how to um, make it so that the cables can move freely with the movement of the machine. The machine is um, built primarily of this high-density polyethylene plastic, which um, people might balk at at first, but I can say from um, experience in making the rubber band guns that I make that it's an ex extremely durable and um, an excellent material to use structurally for something like, like this machine. It's, um, it's a very dense, tough plastic. It's very rigid. It makes the machine very heavy. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really actually something that's a great alternative to, for instance, an aluminum frame. And um, as is advertised for the machines, it, it makes all the parts easily replaceable. One thing that's easy to see about this CNC machine is that it's a CNC machine, the parts of which were made on another CNC machine. And um, it's, it fits together very well. It's got very good tolerances. Uh, it arrived um, completely square and um, true. When getting the machine set up and running, I found that there was a bit of play in the Y-axis and I contacted Sean Morris at Zenbot and got a quick response. He helped with identifying the source of the problem and it was a fairly quick fix. So the customer service experience I've had was certainly positive. After that, the accuracy of the machine has been very good. Assuming that I've set up the tool paths correctly, the cutter goes exactly where I expect it to go and with excellent repeatability. It's harder for me to comment on the precision of the machine since I don't ask it to do particularly precise work. I don't look for precision too much beyond about a hundredth of an inch. I have no reason to think that it wouldn't be capable of much more precise work, assuming you had a properly set up tooling and um, good quality, carefully thought out tool paths. I should say real quick here that the apparent roughness of the cut that you see here is not due to the Zenbot, but rather the type of cutter or end mill that I was using. While the Zenbot does save me a lot of labor uh, when it comes to rough cutting the parts for the rubber band guns, I still do quite a bit of hands-on work in finishing the parts. I could probably uh, get the Zenbot to do more of the work, but since I build my toys as handcrafted, I've chosen to limit the extent to which I use it. Cutting the high density polyethylene parts I use in my rubber band guns, same stuff the machine is made out of. So in general, I've been very pleased with this purchase and the contribution it's made to my small business. Uh, I think I spent a total of about $2,500 for the machine, software, old computer, expensive shipping to Alaska, and then all the other um, bits and pieces that brought the whole thing together. It's certainly taken a lot of effort and patience, trial and error, and um, just general learning. I'm sure the machine is capable of much, much more than what I'm asking it to do. And as time passes, I'm looking forward to further exploring its capabilities. Don't hesitate to ask questions or leave comments. And please do check out my other videos on the Rubber Gunner channel.